Welcome back to another episode of Sailing SV Bohemian. That's all I got. Now this is all in real time. Shelly done stumbled. The uh, This is about some winter work we're doing now that we couldn't make our way to Florida. So, you know, the last video was about a lot of fiberglass work. I'll get back to that wonderful fiberglass work. But this is, we're, we're doing a little bit of plumbing, a little bit of transmission work, and getting the motor ready and getting more, more sound of a boat before we take off. So enjoy. enjoy. Winter in Annapolis. Look at the boat. Well, outside Annapolis, we're in Delaware up the C and D Canal. So it's like a little canal that makes it a shortcut for the bigger, bigger ships. On those days, what you do is you work on the inside of the boat, and that's what I've been doing. I've been getting all the water system in order. So right there is I moved all the pumps. The pumps used to sit in that engine compartment behind those ladders all the way to the back, away from the water tank. And there's the water tank. That's the back of the motor. So right there, is the shells where the pumps used to set. And you see they set up high above the above the tank. Now the pumps are in the middle of the tank so they won't have to work as hard to keep primed up because of the pressure of the water. So I bought the smallest pumps and they're three gallons a minute but I split them all up to where you know everything's running on its own lines. So it should be, it might work. I don't know if, if it doesn't work, I'll buy bigger pumps. But they're the cheapest. They're only like 100 and they're the easiest to get. You can just get them anywhere. If you're out in the middle of nowhere, I'm sure you can find that pump. So it used to have these old pumps that you can't even get anymore. And they're out here. There they are, right there. They were, they were called, I don't know. They didn't have a pressure switch. The pressure switch, it was more like a, some kind of chip or something that controlled it. But they, supposedly they were always having issues with them. And they didn't even work. So, when you buy a boat like this, that's been neglected, every system, so even... Every system's worn out. All the pumps will be worn out. Even the tank, water tank. So when I first started, I filled the tank full of water. Tank had a leak in it. So I had to take, let me show you. I had to cut a hole in the tank. And you see all around that whole tank, you see that, that's J.D. Weld. So everywhere where there was a seam, where they welded the tank together, it was pitted really bad. And there was a hole way back up in that corner. See where it's real thick? That's where it was the worst. So we're going to see if it works. You could put like three coats of uh, a food grade epoxy inside that tank and coat it. But I don't think it's necessary. I think the JB weld will hold it and it'll be fine. So I have, I've taken the transmission. So come take, let's take a look at this transmission. So this is the old Borg Warner transmission that I had rebuilt. And trans, there's a place called Transatlantic Diesel on the East Coast. They specialize in Perkins parts. So if you're ever looking for anything Perkins, that's the place to go. And this thing weighs probably like, I don't know, I'd say 200 pounds, so I've got to figure out a way to get it back 
into the back of the transmission, lift it up and slide it in. So I haven't, I haven't got to that yet, but that's the next. Once I get the plumbing done, then I'm going to put this transmission back in. So there's the transmissions, the Perkins 63544. And the whole side of the manifolds off of it, it used to have an old Bowman uh, heat exchanger that the intake and the out, the intake and the output exhaust and the heat exchanger was one piece. And you can't get that, you can't, it was bad. You can't replace it, they don't make it anymore. So I have to buy a refit kit that costs like 4,500 bucks to refit it. And then I have to, down in there where the transmission goes, all that has to get cleaned up and painted and made fresh again. And I, you know, I've been grinding down, cleaning the motor and painting it to make it look fresh. And the, I've got this side done. I have to go to the other side and figure out a way to get all that cleaned up and painted without having to remove all those fuel lines. Maybe by summertime, everything will be in order and I can go sail around finally. So there's the fitting. So you see where these two washers are, that'll squeeze between the tank and then you'll tighten that up. And that'll hold, you know, hold it on the tank. And then this is a PEX fitting. And then that just goes in there like this. And you could have bought one, a PEX fitting that would have went over the top if you wanted to, but all the piping is half inch. It probably would have been better if I did everything three quarter and then broke it down to half inch when I got to the sinks and stuff, but super pain in the ass and it's just a boat. So, and then this goes here. So that's is what's setting down inside the tank. That'll go all the way to the bottom of the tank and it's all plastic. That's why I'm saying no more copper. And I, I wish I could have, I sh you could have got plastic ones because everything on a boat, the more plastic now, plastic's pretty strong, the better because you get electrolysis on everything around here. And so when I took it apart, the old one, and pulled it out, this thing here, it just twisted right off. It was no good. It just, it got ate away. So, but you know, that was 40 years in the boat. And, uh, that, this will outlast me, I guarantee it, because I eat all the time. <laughs> all right, so I put the fitting into the tanks. So there's three of them, one for each pump. And the top has a, another PEX fitting. See, it looks like that. And then that'll just go down in there. You'll use, like, white plumber's tape. And then that'll be in, and then these will connect up. And then you always want to have one extra. So there's an extra one. So everything on a boat, a boat that you're going to crew that'll go across the ocean, you need to have at least one extra thing. So all these fittings and stuff, you need to have extra, you need to have stuff that you can fix the boat if something breaks. Because, I mean... Who, I don't even know. Like this fitting right here, when it was made in Taiwan, all the parts, like the perk, everything was from England. So the through holes and a lot of these, anything that has to do with plumbing, all done with the fittings they use in England. I forget what it's called, royal fittings or something. I can't remember what it's called. But the fitting, the threading's different. So it's a pain in the ass. So like this plug... I just tight that's American fitting. I just they'll they'll go in, but they're just gonna they'll strip it, they'll strip down into it. And they're just off just by a hair's ass. This fitting was installed for the water maker. 
So it has a pretty good water maker on. Well, when it was new, it was a it's pretty it's a good one, and it it was a good one. But this is with the intake where the water this hose right here goes back. So when the water maker kicks on, pushes water, fills the tank up. This is the fill right here to fill, and this is a vent. And so when I filled it up. It didn't seem to be venting very well. So there's another issue. So I have to trace this down and see what's going on with the vent. And then when I filled, when I was trying to use the old pumps, I was it, it wouldn't prime. So I took a water hose at the fill outside of the boat and I was pushing pressure. I filled this tank full and I was pushing pressure into the tank and it primed the pump, but the pumps kept losing the prime but right over at the fill on the deck water started coming down through the wall dripping through the ceiling so that tells me that there's another issue up there where where the fill all the hoses connect to the fill here's the wires to the sending unit and it was some old style sending unit it was called like a 120 40 they don't make them anymore i seen a used one on ebay but i'm just gonna buy a new one and buy new gauges and replace the fuel ones too because they're wore out. I'm going to show you guys a little trick about PEX. So if you're using these crimp rings, you see how that slides? Before you go put it up to where you want to crimp it on to whatever fitting. So like if you were, see that's what it looks like when it's crimped on. Slides on a barb. Take your crimping tool. And just barely, I mean, just barely touch it. I just barely touched it. And then that tightens it up just a smidgen. See, to where it doesn't slide. So when you slide that up on there and you go to crimp it, it's not falling down. So this is what it looks like with all, all done. That is the pickup tubes. And then right up there is where they connect. And then the bottom, it's about, they're about an inch from the bottom. That way, as time goes by, the, it won't pick up the trash from the bottom of the tank if you're not keeping it as clean as you should. You could put something like this on the bottom, like a T. And then, like, so if you cut the... If you didn't want, if you wanted it down to a half inch, you could draw, you could put this on there and readjust your bad measurements. Cause I was trying to get a half inch, but that's all right. It's an inch. So I'll let it go. So it's just, that's everything. That's everything. When I did this water, everything was, something was wrong with every part of it. And if you, I'm telling you, if you guys buy a boat that's worth three, four hundred thousand dollars, and you get it for fifty, hundred thousand bucks, and you're like, oh, just fix it up, you have to take. I'm telling you, every system is going to be jacked up. Every, you know, the motor might be good, but everything on the outside of the motor is going to be shit. Or you just have to go up through everything. It's big. It's a lot. It's a lot. So take that consideration because you can buy a boat like this for two, three hundred thousand dollars. That's pretty. That somebody has already gone through and kind of tuned it up a little bit. And you won't get hit. Or you can buy like an Amel Maramu. We had a cha chance to buy one for two hundred forty thousand dollars, and it was perfect. There wasn't a scratch on the interior. And you know, I had maybe 180 grand. I could have borrowed another 50, 60 grand and had a boat that's ready to go across the ocean. So, you know, the, the, what I learned is I know everything about a big boat now. So like if I went to go buy another big boat, I know what to look, I know, I know. It was like going to college. It was like going to college. I know what to, uh, I know what the systems, where the systems are. I know that like if I went to go look at a Hallberg Rossi, like a 2011, 
the systems on those boats are way more complicated and way more way more expensive so like on this this is like an 84 Tayana 55 CNC all the systems in it are old school so it's really cheap compared to the the newer boats to fix the parts are cheap easy you can just you can you can fix it it's not that complicated compared to the the, the newer built boats so that's the tip of the day and uh, I learned my lesson